ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಕ್ಷ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಧಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ವಸಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಅಸಂಭೂತಿ ಸಂಭೂತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸಂಭೂತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಸಂಭೂತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ we we'll try to see the difference. When I say different mean it's not that different. It is a, a different 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 not that ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸಂಭೂತಿ ಅಸಂಭೂತಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕವರ್ ನಾವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಕವರ್ ದಟ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ Asambhuti is the prakriti, the manifest. Sambhuti is the hidden, the unmanifest. From a different angle, sambhu, Asambhuti is that which is manifest. Sambhuti is that which is unmanifest. please understand we are not talking about manifest and the unmanifest as in world and brahman it's a special meaning here again because we always talk about manifest means world and manifest means brahman not that meaning not that meaning so don't take that meaning it's a different meaning that he is giving here those who worship the manifest are in blinding darkness those who worship the unmanifest are in greater darkness than that so when we say greater darkness mentally you supply that when we say greater darkness what you have to conclude the sentence greater than the blinding darkness so what is worshiping the manifest and what is worshiping the unmanifest the manifest is prakriti understand we are talking about the microcosm here not the macrocosm we are talking about the individual so in the individual there is a manifest and there is the unmanifest those who worship the manifest are in blinding darkness those who worship the unmanifest is in greater than blinding darkness now what is the manifest in the individual that has to be interpreted that is sambhuti and asambhuti manifest is instead of using the word unmanifest use the word hidden it becomes more clear again i repeat instead of using the word manifest and unmanifest which is the right word use it differently it becomes easy to if you use a different word interpretation will be easy so manifest is that which can be seen and manifest means that which is hidden and manifest not in the sense of yet to manifest and manifest in the sense of hidden so those who worship the manifest goes into blinding darkness those who worship the hidden goes into greater darkness now we have to now we have to understand in a microcosm what is manifest and what is hidden in the individual what is manifest and what is hidden manifest means that which is easy to cognize hidden means that which is difficult to 
कॉग्नाइस मैनिफेस्ट मीन्स दैट विच इज विजिबल टू यू नोन टू यू हिडन मीन्स दैट विच इज नॉट नोन टू यू बट नोन टू अदर्स संभूति असंभूति फॉलो अगेन ई रिपीट मैनिफेस्ट मीन्स दैट विच इज नोन टू दैट विच इज नोन टू यू इन यू इन यू देर इज समथिंग नोन टू यू इन यू देर इज समथिंग अनोन टू यू नॉट ब्रह्मन वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबउट गॉड ब्रह्मन हिर् भरत ब्रह्मन को Because both both are blind in darkness. Or whatever, we can never bring in Brahman or God here. Because you can't see only Brahman. 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 Because you can't see hidden means that which is unknown to you but known to others around you i have given enough clue now with this clue connected to the connecting mantra with this clues about asambhuti and sambhuti you should be able to connect it to vidya and avidya same meaning you should be able to connect it what is the connection now your senses and your sense transactions are known to you your ego is unknown to you your ego is unknown to you and your ego is clearly visible to those around you idhu mela clue kodukave mudiyadu isn't it what is in you but you do not know it ego what is in you that you know it senses correct this is the meaning of sambhuti and asambhuti now connected the verse makes now say it like that mantra makes sense isn't it those who worship the senses those who are sensual go into greater dar- blinding darkness those who are egoistic go into greater darkness than that sambhuti and asambhuti same meaning but the derivation is from a different the derivations from the angle of prakriti manifest and the hidden are you able to follow now now it won't be difficult then the rest of the conversation follows whatever we did in the morning that we need not repeat again that we did not repeat what is the what or what is the worshipers of ego what is the worshiper of senses and all we need not talk once you give this meaning it becomes very clear which is what i said we will we will see it in the evening संभूति एंड असंभूति सेंसर्स डिमांड रेपटेटिवली ईगो डिमांड्स वेराइटी सेंसर्स हैव इन केटर्ड एटलीस्ट विल स्टे क्वाइट फॉर अ वाइल ego you keep catering and catering and catering it demands more and more and more that's why those who are catering to the senses are in blinding darkness those who are catering to the ego are in greater darkness than that but from outside those who are catering to the senses looks those who are catering to the senses always looks as in great danger and the person catering to the ego doesn't even understand that there is a blinding darkness than that are able to understand now vidya and vidya sambhuti asambhuti for which you need to understand what the senses do and what the ego does that's a beautiful discussion that's the that's the that's the discussion of vidya and avidya also sambhuti and asambhuti what the senses do and what the ego does
demands of the sense organs is common to all species. That's why it's called prakriti. So, yeah. Demands, the sensual demand is common to all species. That's why it's called prakriti. Human beings have a different worship. What is a different worship? The ego worship. So, sense, worshipping the senses, meaning sensual, versus worshipping the ego. And this worshipping the ego is so unique only to a human being. Whereas, all species including humans cater to their senses. First distinction is what? Senses demand. You feed. At least for a few hours it will stay quiet. At least for a few days it will stay quiet. At some point of time, the demand of the senses will become repetitive. Again I repeat, senses demand. You feed it. It stays quiet. It demands. You feed it. It stays quiet. It doesn't create that much of a problem. Because it's prakriti based. Because it is prakriti based, nature based, it doesn't create that much of a problem. That is asambhuti, prakriti worship. Sambhuti is worshipping the hidden, worshipping the unmanifest. The Vedantic word, the Vedic word is Hiranyagarbha. The Vedic word is Hiranyagarbha. Now, to understand all the Vedic terms and terminologies, you should have a separate retreat. You should have a Vedic uh, terminology retreat. That will be so mathematical. Hopefully one day we should do, we can lift, uh, we don't know. If Brahman willing, we will do that also. So, the Sambhuti and Asambhuti in, in the Vedic terminology has a different meaning. Now, what the Vedic terminology says, we are trying to explain it in the language that we are able to understand now. We are not changing it, we are using the... Now, what is Hiranyagarbha? That which is hidden. That which is hidden. In the microcosm, in the individual, what is manifest and what is hidden? The senses and the senses demands is manifest. What is hidden? The ego and the demands of the ego. So those who are catering to the senses demands go into blinding darkness. Those who cater to the demands of the ego enter into greater darkness than the blinding darkness. It means we are trying to understand the difference between the senses and the ego. We are trying to understand the difference between senses and the ego. Vashehi yashyendriya anitasya pragnya pratishtita. In the Bhagavad Gita and other literatures, they talk a lot about sense control. We also keep talking a lot about sense control. We keep talking about a lot. Upanishad takes a slightly different turn and says, Sense control and all is a matter of ordinary discipline. If you don't have it, it's okay. It's not that problematic. It's okay means it's not that problematic. Because over a period of time, you will come back to the same routine stuff. Much ever you go and eat all food, third meal you will want to come back to the idli dosa only, isn't it? Depending on that, depending on which side you are coming from, isn't it? North India, okay, after two, three meals, you will come back to your dal roti, isn't it? Mexican will come back to, even if you, even if you go to Mexico and have a Sarona Bowl restaurant there, what you will do, that Mexican will come back to, that food. So, sensors are, sensors demand, but it doesn't hurt you so much. What hurts you a lot? The ego. Hmm? the person who has some sense control develops an ego that it is under my control. That the Upanishad is is whipping. I eat only one meal a day. Sense control. That becomes 
that becomes a source for big ego now why because because you are able to manage the prakriti because you are able to manage the prakriti the very managing the prakriti causes a a greater ego that ego enters you into blinding darkness you feel like asking what do you want us to do you should do sense control or you should do ego control or we should do no control what is it that you are asking us to do understand the difference that is sambhuti and asambhuti prakriti and otherwise how to explain prakriti as a manifest and hidden in the individual they don't say that he is only as human becomes more and more so called sophisticated and civilized ego worshiping becomes promoted as human becomes more and more civilized sense worship comes down and ego worship becomes a lot in a primitive society it is just sense control and no ego at all uh, are you able to follow as the society advances so called advancement so called civilization what is the result of that civilization what is the result of the advancement sense con- senses will be seen as very inferior and the person all that is promoting the ego will be seen as higher hmm? all that is promoting the ego will be glorified if that is blinding darkness this is greater darkness greater than blinding darkness how endless are the demands of the ego senses at least temporarily will stay quiet you feed the ego how much ever you feed it it still wants to be fed more correct how much ever you feed the ego it still wants to be fed more it never happens where you carry on eating even after hunger is satiated can you do that neutralization quickly happens there you will stop it when it come when it concerns the ego what happens you can feed and feed and feed and all human discoveries are regarding all human discoveries are about promoting the ego so upanishad says that is entering into greater darkness than that prabhu are you okay now what is the new when he is repeating it there is a repetition and there is a subtlety also there are two things when upanishad repeats there is a repetition and in that repetition there is a reinforcement and also in every reinforcement there is a there is a subtlety you can you can you can figure out what is the subtlety this is the subtlety ego is not repetitive ego is not repetitive it is always they are always unsatiable and they want new 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 things it want understand the distinction between ego and the senses there you will know what is more dangerous is it the ego or the senses that's why we started by saying your ego is hidden to you but visible to others around you that's why it is blinding darkness if it is visible to you it is manifest you will quickly know how to handle it the ego is such that it will not be visible to you others can see it very well why because of the sheer distance they have they can see it clearly because you are so close to it you cannot see it clearly therefore the worshippers of asambhuti and sambhuti go what get caught hmm?
what are the indicators of ego worshipping <laughs> some indicators has to be given there no what are the indicators of ego worshipping some indicators the shastra gives some indicators also take an example where a person claims i have renounced where a person says i have renounced if you can if you can do a surgery in that mind you can find out what is it the renunciation is nothing but an act to satisfy the ego it's an act and that act is for what to satisfy the ego only the ego will starve the senses will torture the senses to get that glory they will follow that's why all the pseudo spiritualist upanishads don't accept at all because for the sake of the ego you can for the sake of the ego you can torture your senses deprive yourself suffer because the ego finds the glory in suffering are you okay hmm are you okay till now because this is what we want to study as the distinction a person has renounced and if nobody is honoring that renunciation that person will be very hurt you know that you make a sacrifice and nobody notices your sacrifice you'll get you'll get very hurt huh isn't it you buy a watch a new watch and nobody notices it you buy a new car nobody notices it you buy a new house nobody notices it how would you feel suddenly it looks suddenly it has no no meaning at all to you is it that suddenly it has no meaning now you find it, oh my god then what is the way to bring meaning people can be induced to do anything for ego worship and the so called spiritual people induce themselves into doing things which is nothing but ego worship driving them into greater darkness then blind and in darkness are you able to follow you can be induced because ego is so strong an entity that it can manipulate the prakriti it can it can manipulate the the prakriti if you stop if you withdraw your honor if you stop withdrawing 99% of the spiritual people so called spiritual people will run away from spirituality so called people will run away from that why because it is honor that keeps them it is the honor that keeps them going and it is the ego that plays there you follow it is the ego that's that's playing there in the long history of mankind we have found out millions of devices the humanity has found out to satisfy the ego every new discovery what a, what a joy it gives correct i disco ai ha <laughs> huh? ai what is ai ha huh? ai when you don't know how to even use the natural intelligence why do you want to go for the artificial intelligence ai what a great what a wonderful discovery another chat ha ah correct that's the latest chat gpt oh my god and they asked me also do you know about chat gpt i pretended as though i didn't know oh, what is chat i know only whatsapp chat i said chat gpt oh my god millions of devices we can find to satisfy the ego and they say it is entering into 
blinding darkness now who so what is the difference between vidya and avidya and sambhuti and asambhuti it's the same thing the angle from which you come is different so from one way it is vidya and avidya only from another angle because he is using these two words which has this meaning we can dig deep and find out this also generally these kind of uh, explanations that we are giving for sambhuti asambhuti and all you will not find in the commentaries written because it's so difficult to how can you write that in a paragraph so difficult to write therefore most of it you will not you will not find in the oral tradition it was maintained the oral tradition it was it was maintained in the oral tradition so well so well preserved whoever had the time and inclination will f- dig deep and and get so here we are trying to show that create that that interest to dig deep into that the secrets that's why upanishad calls it as a secret rahasya it is bhagavad gita he calls it rajavidya rajaguhya it's a royal secret it's a royal secret that everybody knows but nobody understands it's known to everybody ego is the problem but nobody nobody understands ego as the as a problem so what he says a simple guideline to to understand what how do you know you are a ego worshipper or a worshipper of the senses how do you know a touchstone one unit for for measurement what is that unit anybody can guess now we all know the answer that's why i'm saying anybody can guess what is the unit of measurement of the ego worship there is one unit that can never it's a touchstone that never make that that never goes wrong one unit one unit of measurement is a clear indicator that you that you that you are ego worshipper what is that one word simply say ha huh? you say of i one word i said i i ha huh? praise the man i said one word praise flatter yeah what do you mean by praise is flatter no ha huh? attention one word the unit of measurement of one one unit that tells you very clearly that whether you are a worshipper of sambhuti or asambhuti ha huh? indispensable if i say it you will throw stones on me <laughs> this we know already you are going to say but still we do yeah that's why it's hidden that's why it's hidden that one unit okay i will tell you anxiety anxiety is the unit of measurement sensory demands will never create that much of an anxiety ego demands create so much of anxiety again i repeat the demands of the sensors doesn't get so anx- it will not become anx- it will not be anxiety there anxiety is an informer telling you that you have ego you are worshiping ego that's why we say worry and anxiety worry and anxiety worry and anxiety how do you know that you are a ego worshiper sambhuti anxiety sense organ will high, will get disturbed if it is fed more 
ego says how will i get how will i be fed more that is anxiety again i repeat sense organs get sense organs says if you feed more to the sense organs you will start feeling uneasy supposing suppose if we can eat, eat only four idlis the fifth idli you will start feeling uneasy you cannot do ego gets into the anxiety what is anxiety how to be fed more how to be fed more how to be fed more a constant search to wanting to feed more and more and more is the ego and what happens to them they are in greater darkness than the blind and in darkness hmm? of all the egos the religious ego the moral ego is the most dangerous that's why they are in blind and darkness you can have very many types of ego of all the ego what is the most dangerous ego the moral ego is the most dangerous the spiritual ego the moral ego is the most dangerous therefore he says they enter into blind and in darkness hmm people believe some ego is necessary no sir hmm? self some self some self pride is necessary no some ego is necessary no otherwise what will others what will others do to you from this you get a hint of the ego what is ego gets its derives its pleasure through the eyes of the other that's ego it doesn't have anything on its own since ego doesn't have anything on its own it is always deriving the pleasure from the eyes of the others that's why we are constantly looking for certification we are constantly looking outside who will who will say yes who will say yes who will say yes and if nobody is saying yes it gets very affected are you okay since the ego depending on the other it will start manipulating the other since the ego is dependent on the other what it will do it will start manipulating the other we will start manipulating everything so what is the solution stop looking at yourself through the eyes of the others that's all you should worry about who am i you should not worry about what others say about me but we are more concerned about what others say about me rather than who am i so i have to get certificate from all the 40 since i have to get certificate from all the 40 what i have to do rajwir i have to please all the 40 isn't it ego is always anxious about evaluation of the others about me very statements in the body isn't it we are not going to details at all because each and every statement we can take one one class yeah each and everything don't worry we will do isavasi again <laughs> yeah, we will not stop we will do isavasi again so our ego is what how the others evaluate me is more concerned than who who am i who am i actually ego will never allow you to look at itself because once it starts looking at itself it finds the hollowness in it therefore what it does by itself it feels so hollow so take certificate from others and the certificate that i take from others make me to give some 
suddenly it becomes meaning suddenly i become very meaningful to to myself of these two the worshippers of the senses and the worshippers of the ego who are in greater darkness the worshippers of the ego we are so much dependent on the eyes of the others that we forgot that we have our own eyes literally it is forgotten how can a man using the eyes and still forget that he has eyes as the blinding darkness as a greater than greater than the blinding darkness imagine that story the upanishad says how the parrot is caught you know that story no do you remember that story who doesn't know that story how the parrot is caught rajul you don't know we all okay oh there's so many people don't know ah huh? hush how the parrot is caught what they do in those days they have to catch the parrot how to catch the parrot it's flying all the time you can't climb the tree and you can't climb the tree and catch the parrot so what they did between the two poles they'll tie a string they'll tie a string between the two between the two trees they'll tie a string and the parrot will thinking that it is a thinking that it is a branch of the tree the parrot will come and sit on that string as soon as it lands on the strings and grips it what happens to the parrot because of its own weight it goes ulta it starts hanging upside down because it is hanging upside down it will it will grip the it will grip the rope even tighter even tighter the hunter will teach the novice don't worry go have a tea break and come the parrot will not parrot will not fly away why because in that panic it has forgotten that it has wings it has forgotten that it has wings even if it is upside down if it releases it will not tumble down it can still fly that's how the ego is called that's how the human beings are also like that human beings are also like that parrot forgotten that they have and if you forget that you have wings you will start depending on others and what you will do because of the dependence you will hold on to them tightly and the very holding on to them tightly is a suffocation to the to the other because of not able to handle your suffocation they will leave and then you will say ungrateful people sir how much i did for them worshippers of the ego goes into blinding darkness iti sushrama dhiranam next mantra i'm not going mantra by mantra i'm just connecting everything iti sushrama dhiranam this is what we have heard from those who have understood the difference between the senses and the ego senses are dangerous no doubt about it no doubt about it ego is more dangerous hmm and the path to deal with the ego what is the path to deal with the ego now the path to deal with the ego is the method of gratitude the path to deal with the ego is the method of gratitude thank you gratitude means thank you that's all what is gratitude it simply say thank you thank you thank you but how long to keep saying thank you sir but how long you are complaining huh? how long you can you can comfortably comfortably complain for a for janmas also you can keep complaining but thank you third time to say thank you gets very tough third time to say thanks so avanga pannadhukku than thanks solltaval appra enna but then complaining will continue for so 
సంభూతి అండ్ అసంభూతి ఇది సుశ్రుమ ధీరానాం ఇది సుశ్రుమ ధీరానాం దే ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు డిస్టింగ్విష్ ఇట్ సో వెల్ బికాస్ దే వెంట్ ఇన్ టు దెమ్ సెల్స్ డిసైఫర్డ్ ఇట్ సో క్లియర్లీ అండ్ అండర్స్టూడ్ దిస్ ఇస్ వాట్ ఇస్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీబడి they went into themselves so deep all the study cannot come externally they digged into themselves so deeply that they are able to decipher it and say this is what is happening in everybody to give up the worship of the senses is standardization simple method standardization you stop the uh, the the sensor worship is managed how do you how do you handle the ego, ego? zero try to become that zero it is zero that is zero is the way of handling the ego standardization discipline panchangandha is the way of handling the senses so there is a way to handle the senses and then there is a way to handle the ego ide shushruma dhiranam they have taught us like this since they have taught us like this we are so grateful to them and we and, and the and the person says this is what i heard from my master this is what i heard from my master and what did that master say this is what i heard from my master my master and you go back go back go back go back go back who is the first master divine becomes the first master so as it were brahman is talking as it were god draws you god draws towards itself himself or herself one who is ready to stop these two worshiping whoever is ready to stop these two worshiping god god attracts is like a gravity pull the word krishna means that also krishna means that which pulls you krishna means that krishna means various meanings of the various meanings one meaning is that he will simply he will simply pull you sambhuti and asambhuti who teaches you that it is sushruma dhiranam so prakriti means senses the hidden means ego. the ego the worshippers of the hidden he is into blinding greater than the blinding darkness who taught us this and what is the ego the worst form of ego the spiritual ego how does a spiritual ego i am better than all the all others are rotting in parting <laughs> <laughs> i am in isha vasi upanishad retreat yeah. <laughs> greater than the blinding dark <laughs> now what do we do here what do we do with this person now because at least you should certify yes for being here no yeah, yeah, at least you should certify as saying congratulations you have you have come here have done a good job he is saying exactly the opposite the results are different the result of vidya is different the result of avidya is different here it is vinasham and asambhuti again again the results are different same vidya and avidya again another word he uses since he is using another word we can't stay quiet we have to find we have to find some meaning for that also that's why most of the times i used to think one day that that day that upanishadic rishi should come and he should tell us yeah. he will he will burn all the he will burn all of us put together i think you simply say whatever you want to say and then say he is our say saying that he is our say saying that he is our say saying that he is i am only saying sambhuti and 
అసంభూతి వినాశం అని సంభూతి దట్స్ వాట్ ఐఎమ్ సేమ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద టూ నావ్ అగైన్ హీ చేంజెస్ ద మీనింగ్ ది మేనిఫెస్ట్ అండ్ అన్ మేనిఫెస్ట్ వీ సే వీ కాల్ ఇట్ అస్ ద సెన్సెస్ అండ్ ద ఈగో హియర్ he talks about it as again again two different meanings those who worship the personal god into blinding darkness those who worship the those who are into rituals and uh, personal worship are in blinding darkness those who enter into the worship of the formless enter into greater darkness than that vinasham and as again another meaning those who worship the those who worship the a personal god are in blinding darkness because very soon they will get, very soon they will get out of it but these people here who think they are so is a very unique condemning the so called arrogance of the advaitins amar they will follow Oh, i don't believe in this rituals and all that i am a i am a i am a person of thinking what thinking i am a thinking person i can't accept anything without rationality it has to be logical it has to be reasonable then only i will agree to that person isa vasya says you are in greater than blinding darkness all the edifice that we are building about ourselves he simply he simply collapsing where what is the name of that game you pull and the whole thing collapses ha ah. jenga ah jenga ah, ah, correct <laughs> and kian made me play that game no ha ah, same game same game isn't it ah, we played he made me play he was winning he was so dumb that how can he win he is a dumb person how can he win so i so i found out the technique i found out i found out the technique zenga 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 build 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 everyone is building everyone is building and everybody is waiting for the other to everybody is waiting for the other to make one mistake and the whole thing collapses and everybody is it a game or what enjoying the destruction <laughs> you build you build you build and then somebody comes and destroys and claps he goes that those who worship the unmanifest the formless the the, the so called advaitins who talk themselves as though they are so great is giving one knock and you should see how ramanuja goes into eloquent commentary on this <laughs> oh my god i should you should see that a saint who is dead against this non dualistic philosophy you should see his commentary how beautifully he goes he goes against this and demolishes them completely almost you feel like agreeing with him and it is true also because just a theoretical knowledge they get, they gather here and there dismiss all the path negate the path dismiss the path as useless because they have heard a few because they have heard a few words because they have heard a few words because they have by hearted a few words and because they think they are thinking what they do they simply come and demolish all the glorious things that is helped that is devised to make you a zero are able to follow they come and destroy all that which is help which is designed to reduce the ego to zero they come and demolish and it can be easily demolished through logic all the rituals and all the prayers and all the karma can be easily dismissed through logic as as silly it can be proved it can be proved as silly Upanishad says they are into greater darkness than that. 
that is why you find in the puranic stories references the enlightened person like rama krishna also sitting and doing their nitya karma anushthana they will not leave that you find in the ramayana they talk about sita performing sandhya prayers in the forest rama sitting and doing those prayers krishna sitting and doing this prayers where there is no need for them to do it but then they do it why because if they stop loka sangraham eva api if they stop the whole lot will the whole lot will stop and not only they stop they come and criticize about all that make it look like so silly and foolish so the so called intellectuals will say i don't do this upanishad is giving one knock on their head again saying that they are into blinding darkness what is the result of these two there are three types of results all actions three types of results what are the three types the hell the heaven enlightenment three the hell one type of result is the hell naraka suffering worry anxiety sorrow suffering etc heaven temporary freedom from worry anxiety sorrow suffering when we say temporary means one day one week one month one year but but nevertheless it is temporary because you will you will come back so one type of result gives you hell another type of result gives you heaven if you follow the lifestyle properly which is said in mantra 1 and mantra 2 you will reach the third benefit what is the third benefit moksha enlightenment when one does worship in a particular way it may look very silly in the eyes of the others have you ever observed it have you ever observed it one worship done by one will look very silly in the eyes of the others the sandhya morning noon afternoon noon prayers will look so good on the eyes of the so called brahmana the muslim prayers five times a day will look very silly correct they are the people in blinding dark greater than that greater than that because what is seen as a reminder of the divine for that person using my using my kutarka buddhi i come and i come and be little it demolish it kutarka buddhi means twisted intellect twisted intellect twisted intellect is no intellect what is it trying to find a fault and in all rituals you can find a you can find a fault and nevertheless human beings have to do have to do rituals but only ego is what wearing akkor bandal is bad but white dhoti white kurta mala is good ah huh? <laughs> you follow that that is bad but this is this is very good why because i am wearing it that's all it is good why only because i am i cannot criticize the white dhoti and white kurta but i can criticize the akkor robe have you ever observed that i will be criticizing the akkor robe so much but i can never turn back and criticize the dhoti and the kurta upanishad says if you criticize that you should be able to criticize this also if you criticize that you should be able to criticize this since you can't do both might as well accept both so acceptance becomes the path acceptance becomes the path this acceptance is what we call as oneness this acceptance is understood as oneness what is acceptance 
they are not saying many paths everybody can have very many reminders for divine we are not carefully follow we are not saying many path we are not saying many paths plural solla people can have very many reminders for divine when one person have a reminder for divine leave it but what these people do they will go on what they will do they will not stay quiet because they think they are very they think they are very knowledgeable they think they are very wise very very wise understand the difference between fool and ignorant we saw that in the morning so so connected to them what they will do they will take away that so he is warning warning to both now if if you see somebody criticizing the other look at him is he able to criticize himself but one who praises himself and criticizes others are in blinding darkness and that's what everybody does as i criticize you by default what i'll be doing i'll be praising myself the benevolent ego is more dangerous than the ignorant remember the very first day we said the path to suffering is laid by the path to suffering is laid by noble intentions iti sushruma iti sushruma purvesham iti sushruma purvesham this we have heard this we have heard therefore the results are different one will produce one result another will produce another result you conquer death through one and you and you attain immortality through the other same that is not dropping also but that also has to be that story also has to be discussed again because he says conquer death through one attain immortality through the other again death means conquering death we always think is immortality but here is distinguishing between the two meaning what you can do something and get a relative immortality and what is a relative immortality vedas gives that you can be a brahma for one manvantara that is a relative immortality you can be a brahma for one manvantara means you will be nobody can surpass you for 4.32 billion years for how many years that's why brahma also keeps every manvantara it keeps ng and we are supposed to be in manvantara means phases first cycle second cycle third cycle fourth cycle fifth cycle ashta vimshati tame in the sankalpa every day they remind themselves the brahmins when they do the sankalpa they keep repeating it every day ashta vimshati tame prathame pade jambu dipe bharata varshe all that is indicative of what if you do all this relatively you can get that heaven but you should transcend that also relative immortality what is relative immortality means people say no நான் போனா கூட இதை பத்தி நாலு பேர் நல்லா பேசணும் சார் கரெக்ட் ஆஃப்டர் டெத் ஆல்சோ சம் பீப்புள் ஷுட் டாக் குட் திங்ஸ் அபவுட் மீ யூ ஆர் கான் நோ வாட் டிஃபரன்ஸ் இஸ் இட் மேக் வெதர் தே சே குட் திங்ஸ் ஆர் பேட் திங்ஸ் பீப்புள் வாண்ட் டு தட் டு பி லெஃப்ட் பிஹைண்ட் கரெக்ட் ஆல்வேஸ் பீப்புள் ஷுட் டாக் குட் அபவுட் யூ வென் ஆஃப்டர் டெத் ஆல்சோ you are not there see will mahatma gandhi ever know today that the 1.3 billion is seeing him only every day that too in 
that too in bunches and bunches and bunches will he even even know that he won't even he won't even know that even if he is born in this mahatma gandhi is a great uh, freedom fighter for this country and all our indian currency will have his his picture indian only killed him also yeah no british fellow killed him indian only killed him also and definitely i am not a fan of gandhi or anything ha huh? please will he know that he is worshipped so much ego wants that to happen so it will plan for that and start doing things now carefully follow the ego wants that to happen therefore what it will do it will plan for that also and start doing things today for that the result are bigger the result is different so by one kind of act you gain a relative immortality by the right type of action sorry by one type of action you conquer death by the right type of action you attain immortality sambhuti and sambhuti iti sushruma iti sushruma dhiranam iti sushruma dhiranam enas tadvicha chakshire because they have told us very clearly the effect of this is different the result of this is different and the result of that is different both leads you to opposite both leads you to opposite result mantra 9 to 14 vidya avidya sambhuti asambhuti beautiful description now if you now if you summarize from mantra 1 till 14 what do you get statement is made purnam statement is made i don't feel that i am purnam purnam means whole complete i don't feel that i am purnam what do i do follow these two of these two lifestyles choose choose one if i refuse to choose any one it is suicidal when we say suicidal means carefully follow carefully follow suicidal means asking for winding path you cannot escape moksha the choice is what today or 10 days later that is the only choice for you can never be eternally away from moksha so when he says suicidal it's not a permanent suicide why do you want to suffer and suffer and suffer and then come back when you can do it now that is the third mantra it is suicidal suicidal means taking a long winding path to come back are you able to follow now what is a winding path a winding path you take to come back to choosing the lifestyle one or one or two choosing what choosing the one or the first lifestyle or the second lifestyle after a winding path or you can do it now if you do it now what do you get jnana palam what do you get three things you are free from shoka moha vijugupta now the person is so geared up and start practicing all that becomes more egoistic <laughs> this is a sequence are you able to follow if a person hears all that get so excited about it and start following it becoming more egoistic as in the morning we said a person will come with ignorance uh, to the spiritual class and go back egoistic that's why the others in the family will be terrified if you are going to vedanta class because you come back and what uh, what torture you are going to give it to others they are only suffering no that's why they say your class you better and he finished for next 3 days you have to sit and listen to what all that person wants to say as though it is said in the class 
again they will not say what is said in the class because in the class they are said you have a problem you have a problem so you want to go and say you have a problem so what happens now so the person coming into the spiritual path come with ignorance of not knowing purnam they come with a good intention of wanting to know purnam and go back egoistic six mantras to demolish that ego six mantras to demolish that ego now this person has demolished that ego also then naturally where that person will be peak of realization peak of realization that is the drama of realization that we are going to do tomorrow not now prabhu video patra the drama of realization again unique mantra we are going to see there he is asking for removal of light he doesn't ask for removal of darkness always we pray for removing darkness here the prayer is remove remove the light because darkness hindrance is heard where have you heard light is a hindrance that it has to be removed aida ang that is a drama of realization again i repeat all along we have all along we have heard darkness as the hindrance here he is saying darkness is not the hindrance light is the hindrance and he is asking for the light to be removed and how he asks prayer ellam pandamba i have finished that's why we said in the morning also prayer is the culmination of effort prayer is a culmination of that all the effort he has put reached that reached that point now the golden disk and how the golden disk is removing and it's removing drama va rabu for you only the drama now tomorrow it will be enacted again yeah bharat for you also the golden disk and and it is so wonderful so wonderful so beautiful he say just allow me to enjoy that for a minute no but just allow me to enjoy that for how much the instruments have been longing for this how much i have been wanting this moment let me let me enjoy it for a moment even before you can conclude that statement let me enjoy it for a moment so how must me it's over saha aha must me maha vakya beautiful is that thing. understood purnam followed the lifestyle took care of the ego came to the last point you should have done the effort to know that having done this effort to come to this point it is so beautiful and so brilliant to be there and all that is asking for it is it's so brilliant and so brilliant this for one nimsham kaamichirunga next minute i will come into aikyam next minute i will come into aikyam but let me let me let me enjoy that moment no golden moment it is now the dilemma what is the drama of realization it's a dilemma what is the dilemma golden moment or so how must me what is the dilemma golden moment Does, do you want the golden moment to be elongated or aikyam there he has no choice it simply dissolves by itself and he is left with so how must me that's why enlightenment happened he didn't make it happen it just happened this is drama of realization after realization what to do now after realization what to do continue to do whatever you are doing because body is still there no continue to do whatever you are doing nothing stops body also goes and when the body goes you say thank you thank you to the elements vayu ranila murta madeyam basmantagum shariram this is the mantra that will be uttered only twice one is at the moment of enlightenment another is 
somebody will utter it for you again i repeat this mantra will be uttered only twice one at the moment of enlightenment you can say it since most of us die in coma yeah uh, we die in coma unconsciously we die isn't it so we don't have chance to say wa you are anilam amrutam atayam and all somebody will pray it for you this man has been arrogating the things for so long thank you on his behalf you know that that's the prayer we do that's the death mantra that's the ritual this this man is dead in this man died unconsciously he didn't say thank you now on that person's behalf i am saying thank you va yuranila mamrata madayatam basmanta ghum shariram even at that point of time jeevan mukti the death of the body is not the death of the enlightenment the end of the body is not the end of the enlightenment tato smara krita gum smara tato smara krita gum smara and then traditionally they conclude with a prayer upanishad is over retreat is over thing we can go to night itself so huh? this is the drama of realization beautiful is the way they take it beautiful is the way how to even explain this arobindo called it as drama of realization that is his coinage so arobindo's coinage drama of realization meaning he is trying to put it in words that is so difficult to capture how to capture that person's moment golden when you go there we'll see tomorrow we have some stories to say on that also what is that golden what is that golden disk and why is he praying for the light to be removed you pray for darkness to go why why will you pray, pray for light to, to go he say let it go and what is the light that is asking to be removed it's golden golden means so meaningful so valuable so wonderful it's like almost the instruments are getting a grasp of it almost like the instruments the senses the mind the intellect almost getting a glimpse of it by the time they can get a glimpse of it transcendence happened so ham asmi mahavakya saha aham asmi come with ignorance and don't go back with ego what is isa was a teaching ஒரு ரீசெண்டர் சில சொல்லணும்னா கம் வித் இக்னரன்ஸ் டோன்ட் கோ பேக் வித் டோன்ட் கோ பேக் வித் ஆர் அகேன்ஸ் தென் வாட் யூ ஷுட் கோ பேக் வித் தர் இஸ் நோ கோயிங் பேக் பிகாஸ் யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் யூ டிண்ட் ஈவன் கம் இன் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பிளேஸ் ஃபார் யூ டு கோ பேக் தட் இஸ் சோ ஹம் அஸ்மி தட் இஸ் சோ ஹம் அஸ்மி தட் இஸ் சோ ஹம் அஸ்மி பிகாஸ் கோயிங் பேக் இம்ப்ளைஸ் தட் யூ ஹவ் கம் how can you say you are going back when you didn't even come this is the theme of the isa isa was your question with this we conclude for today the last few mantras we'll take up tomorrow.